Hey, I've decided to do a discussion uh, on how to get dogs to play whilst I wait for my porridge to cool down. So it's come up because I've it's something that's um, been brought to my attention a lot with clients uh, that owners can often struggle to get their dogs to play with them. And I think this might be because sometimes people are not fully understanding play in dogs, okay? So play has several functions. Um, it allows dogs to compare themselves to others. It allows um, dogs to relieve stress um, and to burn off energy and therefore can also promote relaxation after the event. It can release inhibitions, so therefore it can help in confidence building. Uh, and it can also help to secure bonds, uh, relationships between two individuals. It's really important to understand, to be clear in your own mind, why it is you want your dog to play. So, which one of those, uh, which one of those are you wanting to help promote um, in your dog? Are you wanting to play with your dog to increase your relationship with your dog? Are you wanting to play with your dog to build confidence in your dog, um, or a stress relief, or whatever? Be clear of that, and that will help you to have a better goal in mind and to stay with that um, and stay on course with with that. Um, all dogs like to play, okay? I think sometimes when owners say, my dog doesn't like to play, what they mean is, my dog doesn't like to play fetch, because that's what we typically look at in our dogs as, as, as playing. Our dogs like to play with us, they like to play fetch. And if a dog doesn't understand how to play fetch, I think people sometimes struggle to look outside of the box as to what else play can be. Um, not all dogs enjoy chasing, okay? Certain breeds will. So that's another thing to kind of discuss really is um, specific breeds having certain traits that make them lean towards certain types of uh, play. Let me just decline this call. Good. Uh, so typically, and, and this is a, a generalisation, but I found it mostly to be true, the sight hounds will really enjoy things like the flirt pole chasing games. The terriers will re really like squeaky toys that sound like they're killing them. Uh, so they kind of simulate uh, uh, how they like to kill prey, right? Um, collies like to chase, they like to herd. Um, and, uh, you know, like a Doberman, for example, quite often likes to bite down on things and hold things and own them and play tug, like all the bully breeds, bully breeds they really enjoy the tug type games as well. Um, so really look at the type of play that your dog enjoys. As humans, we tend to categorise, we identify a dog toy as something brightly coloured, plastic or rubber, with a big label that says dog toy on it, okay? And that's not always what a dog views as a play item. So some dogs, no. Some dogs like a tea towel. Some dogs like a washing up sponge, uh, uh, the cardboard inner of a toilet roll. Use whatever you can that um, stimulates your dog in the early stages of wanting to kind of put that mindset in place of, hey, we can play together. Um, and then you can start trying to find a toy that, if you don't want to then use a tea towel, then you can start using like a leather chamois rag for a rag toy and try and find a toy that is has enough similar properties as that item that you've already been using that your dog enjoys uh, to to use in place of that if you're that hung up about it that you don't want to use that item. Um, some dogs have really strong preferences to what type of 
texture of toy they like to feel in their mouth. Some dogs don't like hard toys, they don't like that kind of rigidness in their mouth. Some dogs like something that has a bit of give to it so they can really chomp down. And some dogs like that kind of dissect element of uh, playing. You know, they like to rip things apart and hold things and kind of rag at them. Um, who your dog is playing with is also really important. If you are ordinarily quite a rigid owner and you do a lot of obedience with your dog, you're very strict, um, then the chances are they are not going to feel like releasing their inhibitions to play with you in that fun kind of way. So we can always then change the person that the dog initially in the acquisition stage of we can change the person that the dog is starting to interact with and play with and then we can bring in that person that's typically seen as more and I hate this word but more dominant. Um, and by, by that I mean more rigid really. Um, all dogs have a desire to play and they all have an amount of time in the day that will satisfy their play needs. So some dogs have very low um, need for play but all dogs like to play so it might just be 15 minutes of play is enough for your dog to satisfy that need in them. Some dogs want an hour, some dogs want more. If you allow your dog to use that allocated time that they that they need of play a day to play with other dogs then it's highly unlikely that they are going to want to play with you as much okay because we're setting up a pattern in place there if the dog finds it massively rewarding to play with other dogs and that's all we allow them to do then it's unlikely that they're going to see us as much fun. And we know that what the more a dog does something, the more it becomes a habit and the more rewarding they find it. So be mindful of that. If you want to increase your bond with your dog through play, you may need to limit the amount of time that they get to play with other dogs so that you are seen as more rewarding and they can have more repetition of playing with you too, right? The time of day that you choose to play with your dog is also going to be relevant. Don't try and play with your dog when it's winding down time and your dog's typically tired. You'll know from owning your dog what times of the day your dog is higher energy. Choose those times to play, okay? Uh, yeah, so who is playing with the dog is really important when you're playing with the dog is really important what you're choosing to play with your dog with is also important um and how okay so if your dog doesn't like playing fetch with a toy but it's really food motivated get it to chase food yeah so you can throw food out, the dog's gonna chase the food and eat the food, and then eventually it's going to come back to you waiting because you've got the food on you. It knows you've got the food, right? So they're gonna come back and you can throw another piece of food. It'll come back. Oh, they're gonna throw more. Throw it again. And there we're setting up a little neural pathway there, a little understanding. Okay, they've got something, they throw it, I come back to them, they throw it again. And then we can start doing it with a toy. And we'll do some videos on that actually, how to teach a dog to, to chase and retrieve a toy um, by using food initially. But I think it's really important to properly understand play. Um, and to be really clear in your mind what your motivation for playing with your dog is. So, yeah, play with your dogs.